Okay, everyone, here is the city of Cusco. And I'm sure you've heard of Cusco before, but this is Cusco that is Peruvian and part of the Incas. And um, it also includes, uh, it's called, or it's pronounced Corencancha. That's what the Q is, Corencancha, which is the Incan main temple. temple. And then the walls at Sacsayhuaman, which is kind of this picture right here. And then also the convent at Santo Domingo, which was a Spanish colonial convent. So this is all part of um, Cusco. So I've got some pictures. I first have the map right here. And then I've got the, the walls showing the Ashlar masonry that they used. And I'll go over that in a little bit. And then I'll show you the convent in a little bit as well. By the way, if you ever um, see Mr. Debro or talk to Mr. Debro or have Mr. Debro, ask him about Cusco and Machu Picchu because he's gone there a couple times now and he um, is the best resource to talk about it. I was just texting him, asking him some questions about it. And one of my questions is, because I've never been there and based on pictures it's hard to tell, but I was wondering if this was a like a tourist destination, meaning it exists in its own right, not built in within a city. Um, for example, if you've been to New York, a good example of that is something that had been original would be like the um, the Trinity Church down in Lower Manhattan. That's like an original church to the um, the colonial period, and but that exists inside this huge city. But um, I so I didn't know that. So I texted Mr. Debro like, is Cusco like a tourist destination or is it part of a city? And he said it is a tourist destination that you fly into. And then um, this is where you go if you wanted to hike into Machu Picchu or take the train, if you're a lightweight like Mr. DeBro says, then you leave from Cusco to get to Machu Picchu. And we're gonna talk about that on the next screencast. But so right now we're still in Cusco and it's in the central highlands of Peru. And remember, this is part of the Andes Mountains, the uh, high in the Andes Mountains. And remember when we talked about the historical context when I was talking about the Incas, I was talking about how diverse the regions were and um, how it goes from like coastline and beaches all the way up until like the highest mountains. And so they have such a variety of climates and different types of, um, um, you know, the, the, what the landscape could farm and what it could hold. And so we have such a variety in this region and so this really is a um, an awesome piece to talk about. Um, so this dates from about 1440. Uh, the convent later is from 1550 to 1650 CE and then the main material you'd used is called andesite, uh, A-N-D-E-S-I-T-E. It's just the type of rock that is native to this. Um, and so the Incan state was supposedly founded by Manco Capac, a semi-legendary figure, at Cusco sometime around 1200. The Incas regarded Cusco as the center of the universe. Um, the name actually means navel in their language, or like, you know, your belly button, from which the four quarters of the world radiated. So in the 15th century, the Inca state expanded suddenly and rapidly due to conquest, alliance, and intimidation. To hold a linguistically diverse empire together, the Inca, which by the way means both ruler and people, relied on their religion, a very efficient bureaucracy, and then various forms of labor and taxation, which was payment for the time spent performing tasks of the state. And then in return, the state provided gifts through local leaders, and then they would sponsor lavish ritual entertainment, kind of like the Romans did. So no Andean civilization ever developed writing, like um, some of the other native civilizations talked about, but the Incas did keep detailed accounts and historical records in the form of knotted and colored cords, which is, I think, kind of interesting. To move armies, to transport and, and provide communication within the empire, the Incas, like the Romans, built more than 23,000 miles of roads, and then they were mainly two main north and south roads, and these roads would be on one coast and the other on the highlands, and they were linked by east-west roads. So journeys were taken on foot using llamas as pack animals, 
and then stairways were built to help navigate steep terrain and rope suspension bridges over river gorge crossings. And along these roads, they would put storehouses and lodgings where spaces, they were spaced out about a day's journey apart. And so they formed a relay system of runners, which would carry messages to the furthest part of the empire in about a week. And that's amazing. Um, considering the topography and the geography of this area. So Cusco is the capital and home of the Inca ruler. The city is wedged between Tomayo and the Hutane rivers. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Urban planning designed in the shape of a puma. That's what this is. This is supposed to be in the shape of a puma, which um, it didn't have defensive walls. That's something that's significant, because when you think of walls, you think of defense, but that's not the purpose or the function of the walls. Um, they had impressively scaled head of a puma, that's the Sakshayuman that overlooks the valley, and that's like when people saw it, they thought it was a fortress, kind of like they thought with um, the Great Zimbabwe, the same thing, that this idea, this function is supposed to be some kind of fortress, but that's not the function at all. It um, it's actually was probably a temple that was dedicated to the sun. It could have been a reservoir. Um, it could even have been all three, but um, in the middle, in the belly, the giant. there's a giant plaza at the center of town called Plaza of Cusipata, was surrounded by the main civic structure, Cusco, Q-O-S-Q-O. The palaces and three temples were dedicated to the sun, the creator, and thunder. The plaza was filled with pure white sand from the coast. Remember, this is high in the Andes Mountains, and so we have white sand from the coast. And across the facades of the palaces were enormous, enormous plates of polished gold that reflected the setting sun. The plaza was the center of the Incan cosmos, with four highways leading to and from it that demarcated the four sectors of the empire. Also reading out from the city was 41 crooked spirit paths that connected holy features of the landscape such as springs, caves, shrines, and stones. The city is divided into upper and lower parts reflecting this dual organization of Inca society. So Cusco is symbolic as the political center of the Inca empire. Everyone had to carry a burden when entering the city and gold, silver, or textiles brought in could not be removed later. Okay, so the wall, that wall, the picture on the left, is Saksa Waman. The construction actually took over 70 years and more than 20,000 men to build. Materials for the walls could have come from more than 20 kilometers away. Uh, some of the external walls were over 9 meters high and weigh up to 350 tons. The, um, the building that is they called a fortress was built with huge carved rocks with amazing accuracy and current research suggests that it had a huge I'm sorry it, that the wall um, the fortress was built actually for devotion to the worship of the sun so that's really considered what the function of even though they call it the fortress the function is probably in devotion to the worship of the sun the wall was created with the simplest of tools mainly stone hammers and using no mortar, so that's the ashlar masonry, where it, Inca builders created the stonework with great refinement and durability, and Inca masonry could consist of rectangular blocks or even irregular poly, polygonal blocks in both types, and then they would adjoin the blocks painstakingly to shape and fit them together without mortar. Stone faces might be slightly beveled along their edges, and that each block kind of pillowed in shape and that expressed their identity or the walls would be smoothed into a continuous flowing surface in which individual blocks formed a seamless whole. This is amazing because this architecture has survived so many earthquakes that would destroy later structures but this is still intact and so that really shows the um, significance of how much time and effort it took to build these walls. Okay. Um, moving on to the convent, so um, at the heart of the city was Corn Concha, or the Golden House, the most sacred shrine dedicated to the worship of the sun. Remember the Inca were polytheistic, and they believed that they had descended from the sun and held the sun's worship above all others. But after the conquest of the Incas by the Spanish in 1532, 
Cusco was looted for its gold, obviously, and its jewels, and most was melted down or reused for Spanish purposes, which is so sad. The monastery and the church of Santo Domingo, around and on top of the original shrine, does incorporate the old structure into the new one. So we can kind of see that happening here with this is the probably the original stones but up here that's very that looks very much like um, a European structure so we kind of see this dual nature of what this building once was what this structure once was versus what it became to be um, parts of the old temple are still visible inside and out so it alternated with Spanish Baroque architecture and with um, the Inca features Reports by the first Spanish who entered Cusco uh, t said that there was over 4,000 priests who served the Coin Concha, that ceremonies were conducted around the clock, and that the temple was fabulous beyond, beyond belief. The wonderfully carved granite walls of the temple were covered with more than 700 sheets of pure gold, weighing around two, two kilograms each. The spacious courtyard was filled with life-size sculptures of animals and a field of corn all fashioned from pure gold. So like a fake like garden that was made out of gold. The floors of the temple um, themselves were covered in solid gold. And facing the rising sun was a massive golden image of the sun encrusted with emeralds and other precious stones. All of this golden artwork was quickly stolen and melted down by the Spanish conquistadors led by Francisco Pizarro, who then built the Church of Santo Domingo on the foundation of the temple, showing the dominance of trying to put a new religion replacing the old. Um, and so at the center of Corn Concha, marking the place known as the Cusco Cara Urumi, or the uncovered navel stone, is an octagonal stone coffer which at one time was covered with 55 kilograms of pure gold. Major earthquakes have severely damaged the church, but the Inca stone walls built out of that huge tightly interlocking blocks of stone still stand as a testimony to the superb architectural skills and sophisticated stone masonry of the Incas. Um, Okay, um, there's a YouTube video on it, but I'm already at 12 and a half minutes, so I think I'm going to stop there and um, move on to our next piece, which is part of the, um, the garden. I'm going to talk about the maize cobs or the corn cobs next. So, all right.